A couple of weeks ago, Batman Black and White 6 came out. Pierrick and I have a story in that book. I appreciate the milestone nature of this moment. I wrote and drew Batman and DC Comics published it. In our last chat and draw, I talked about how stars seemed to align in 2014 and open a freeway to a career in comics for me. Today's video is a bit of a follow-up, because no origin story would be complete without going over all of the fails. Let's start with a non-exhaustive list of my biggest soul crushes. On what was supposed to be my first creator-owned book, my first professional gig published by an actual publisher, the writer changed his mind and dropped the project. It was my first heartbreak and I remember weeping for days. A while later, I was set to take over Batgirl as a co-writer and artist. It was our long-awaited first steps in the big leagues, and the crushing news came merely weeks before my schedule start. A well-known artist had become available, I was off the book. Shortly after that, I got offered a Batgirl one-shot. It was cancelled. Then another, which was also cancelled. More recently, our Super Freak sequel, of which we wrote and drew three issues, never went to print. A big publisher turned down a writer's request to have me on one of their best-selling titles. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the countless pitches that went to die, unread, unloved, on every editor's desks I know. Or worse, read, but turned down. When they say comics will break your heart, that's what they mean. There's no way around it. Falling short of our goals is always, to various degrees, devastating. We can take comfort in the fact that no matter how good or driven we are, it's bound to happen at some point. Failure is inevitable. But I think we're not as powerless in the face of it as we'd like to think. So here's how I dealt with my failures. I romanticize failure. Sure, you get knocked down in the second act, but that third act and all its rewards are just around the corner, and surely the underdog will prevail. For me, pushing through adversity has always been a big motivation. I'm small, petite, and I've always looked young for my age. So as a result, people have patronized me my whole life. Like the butcher asking me if I own a knife to cut the big slab of meat I just bought. I know myself enough to realize my drive in all things is to prove I'm the shit. Proving that I'm more than what they expect, proving them wrong. That's what gets me over failure. In that sense, the re-evaluation mode I switch into after a fail is not prompted by wisdom, but I'll admit, by a spirit of revenge. I'm not comfortable with that aspect of my personality, I find it childish and immature, but if it allows me to bounce back after getting knocked down, you better believe I'm gonna use it to my advantage. Who cares what you tell yourself and what your coping mechanism is? Do you want to impress your parents? Yourself? To be the best anyone has ever seen? So as long as you get back up and don't actively harm other people in the process, you can call that a system. I appreciate the fight, the struggle, but eventually I want to actually get there. And when I don't, I get angry. It's never nice to fail. It's never something we look forward to. Especially when we, as artists, ties so much of our self-worth into our work. When a pitch gets turned down, I still feel rejected as a person, despite knowing the many reasons why a project gets passed on, none of them being that I suck as a person. Exposure therapy is used to treat anxiety disorder. It involves exposing the target patient to the anxiety source, and doing so, it's thought to help them overcome their distress. Fairly works the same. The more you're confronted to it, the smaller a deal it becomes. You realize you're still standing, if anything, you're standing stronger, and that you can simply move on. My personal history with failures has also shown me that not only did I survive, but the opportunities that came after were as rewarding and oftentimes better. Every book I ever worked on happened because what was supposed to happen fell through. If that first creator-owned book had panned out, 
I would have never done the infinite loop. If the big publisher had wanted me on their prominent title, I would have never done November. Both those books brought me so much joy that it's hard to imagine a life without them and the friends I made making them. More and more, I approach failure as taking a right instead of a left and less and less as a setback. I've also learned that adopting a data-driven approach to it has helped. I consign the experience in notebooks, I do postmortems, I write down what went wrong and how it could have been avoided. I keep it and look at my lists from time to time. Because to me there's nothing worse than repeating the same mistake twice. And despite all of my best efforts and intentions, I still do that a lot. Still, here are some of the lessons that I've learned. No matter how excited you are, you don't start work until you've signed a contract. A book can get cancelled at every stage of the process, and it's not a done deal until it hits the shelves. I've learned that different books will achieve different goals, and I should take that into account when I pick my project. Some will get you awards, some will get you money, some will earn you a Nazi fartsy rep. He taught me that who you will be working with matters more than what you will be working on. And that once you've found your people, life gets easier if you stick with them. Also, to always have a plan B and to be a Swiss army knife. I've learned to be ready to go solo if all hell breaks loose, as it has in the past. Adults equal better with more with higher. Children don't, so it's definitely something that we learn. And we're all in it. The higher paying job, the bigger house, it's hard to be immune to it. And I did not get okay with failure. I'm still hella competitive. Some part of me would like to get nothing but raving reviews, to get every editor knocking at my door, to see my books get on best-selling lists. And I think we can do better at handling failure if we reconsider what constitutes a win. Through no conscious choice of mine, my priorities have just shifted. I'd love to take credit for it, but I think it just happened through the process of failing over and over again. Experience has helped redefine what qualifies as success to me. And nowadays, it lies a lot less in other people's hands. I can deal with my own failures. I will beat myself up, be mad at my mistakes, but it's more acceptable than dealing with rejection for reasons that are unrelated to the quality of my work. I think that will always be intolerable to me. Setbacks still happen regularly, but they've stopped registering as failures. Working with friends with a no-assault policy on stories I truly believe in, with no creative interference, I would favor that any day over a super high-profile job that comes with strings attached. It doesn't mean it's the key for you, though. Some rules we have to abide by, but others we can make. So my unsolicited advice for you to figure yours out is fail and fail often. <laughs>